Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic Cognitive Neurology Part 8 Disconnection Syndromes Cognitive Neurology Part 8 Disconnection Syndromes The two cerebral hemispheres have different functions. The left hemisphere is dominant for language. Right hemisphere is dominant for spatial orientation. So right hemispheric lesion causes left hemi neglect but left hemisphere lesion does not usually cause right hemi neglect why right hemispheric lesion causes left hemi neglect the explanation is the right hemisphere directs attention within the entire extra personal space that is both the right and the left whereas the left hemisphere directs attention mostly within the contralateral right hemisphere Consequently, when the left hemisphere lesions do not give rise to much contralesional neglect because the global attention mechanisms of the right hemisphere can compensate for the loss of the contralaterally directed attentional functions of the left hemisphere. However, if the right hemisphere lesion gives rise to severe contralesional left hemi neglect because the unaffected left hemisphere does not contain ipsilateral attentional mechanisms. The right hemisphere directs attention both to the right and the left extra personal space, whereas the left hemisphere directs attention only to the left, only to the right extra personal space. So when the left hemisphere gets affected, the right extra personal attention and space is affected, but this right extra personal space is compensated by the intact right parietal lobe which controls both the right and the left extra personal space and therefore left hemispheric lesions do not produce right hemi neglect because this is compensated by the intact right parietal lobe which controls both the right and the left whereas if the right parietal lobe gets affected both the right and the left extra personal space gets affected the right extra personal space is compensated by the intact left parietal lobe but there is no compensation on the left side and therefore right hemispheric lesion causes left hemi neglect. Disconnection syndromes. The disconnection syndromes may be interhemispheric that is between two hemispheres. The two hemispheres are connected together by corpus callosum. So if there is a lesion in the corpus callosum, both the hemispheres can get disconnected. So interhemispheric. Example, alexia without agraphia. The second disconnection syndrome may be intrahemispheric, that is within the hemisphere itself. Example, conduction aphasia, sympathetic, apra sympathetic apraxia, pure word deafness, occipitotemporal lesions, what of visual functions get affected, occipitoparietal lesions, where of visual functions get affected. So now let's see one by one. First, let's focus on the interhemispheric disconnection syndrome. Example, alexia without agraphia. Interhemispheric disconnection syndromes, alexia without agraphia. Alexia means inability to read. Agraphia means inability to write. So, the patient is unable to read alexia, what he has previously written without agraphia. Here is a very interesting example. He can write, person can write, but he cannot read what he has just written. This is alexia without agraphia. So, person can write, there is no agraphia, but he cannot read what he has just written, that is alexia. So, alexia without agraphia. This is classically seen with left posterior cerebral artery lesions, left posterior cerebral artery infarct. Left posterior cerebral artery supplies the left occipital cortex as well as the splenium of the corpus callosum. So, when the left posterior cerebral artery gets affected, the left occipital cortex gets affected and the splenium of the corpus callosum also gets affected which connects the right occipital cortex with the left occipital cortex. 
So when the left posterior cerebral artery gets affected, the left left occipital cortex gets affected so patients cannot see on the right side they have right homonymous hemianopia so they have to see objects on the left side using the right occipital cortex so they see objects it goes to the right occipital cortex but then to convert it into language form they need to access to the language areas which are on the left side so the information from the right occipital cortex has to be transferred to the language areas which are on the left side to convert it into a language form. But left posterior cerebral artery not only causes left occipital cortex infarct but also the splenium of the corpus callosum gets affected and therefore the information from the right occipital cortex cannot be transferred to the language areas on the left side and therefore they cannot read. They cannot see objects on the right side because left occipital cortex gets affected. They have right homonymous hemianopia. Whatever they see on the left side, they cannot read because right occipital lobe, uh, the information from the right occipital lobe cannot be transferred to the language areas which are on the left side because of the lesion of the spinium of the corpus callosum. So they cannot read. They don't have problems with writing because writing goes anteriorly. In fact, uh, writing does not need occipital lobe. Even a blind person can write. So, alexia without agraphia classically is a disconnection syndrome between the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere because of the lesion of the spinium of the corpus callosum. So, left PCA stroke causes infarction of the left occipital lobe causing a right homonymous hemianopia. So, all in visual information needed for activating the speech areas of the left hemisphere must therefore come from the right occipital lobe. The patient with the lesion of the spinium of the corpus callosum cannot read because the visual information cannot reach the language areas which are on the left side. However, there is no difficulty in writing. Presumably, the visual information for activating the left motor areas cross the corpus callosum more anteriorly. So here you can see alexia without agraphia, a diagrammatic representation. So there is a left PCA infarct, so you can see the angular, you can see the left occipital cortex getting affected, a cross mark there, one. And then you can see uh, the spinium of the corpus callosum is also affected because of the left PCA infarction which is marked as two. So with destruction of the left visual cortex and the spinium or intervening white matter, the words perceived in the right visual cortex cannot cross over to the language areas and the patient cannot read. Yeah. So we have seen interhemispheric disconnection syndrome. Now let's see intrahemispheric disconnection syndromes. First is a conduction aphasia. The patient has severely impaired repetition but fluent speech and intact comprehension. The patient has got intact comprehension and fluent speech but impaired repetition. The vernix area in the temporal lobe is putatively separated from the Broca's area by lesion in the arcuate fasciculus. So conduction aphasia is an intrahemispheric disconnection syndrome. The disconnection being between the vernix area and the Broca's area because of the lesion of the arcuate fasciculus. So when there is an arcuate fasciculus lesion in the same lobe that is the left lobe the information perceived, the comprehended from the Wernicke's area cannot be transferred to the Broca's area because of the lesion in the arcuate fasciculus and therefore patient cannot repeat. Since Wernicke's area is intact, patient can uh, comprehend and since Broca's area is intact, patient can speak but since arcuate fasciculus is affected which conveys the information from the Wernicke's area to the Broca's area since the arcuate fasciculus gets affected, they cannot repeat. So this is also a disconnection syndrome, an intrahemispheric disconnection syndrome. The disconnection being between the Wernicke's area, which is for comprehension, and Broca's area, which is for fluency. The second uh, interhemispheric disconnection syndrome, which we are going to discuss, is sympathetic apraxia in Broca's aphasia. Very interesting. Here, by destroying the origin of fibers that connect the left and right motor association cortices, a lesion in the more anterior parts of the corpus callosum or the subcortical white matter underlying Broca's area 
causes apraxia of the commanded movements of the left hand and hemiplegia of the right side. So when the lesion is present in the anterior corpus callosum, the information in the there's a infarct in the Broca's area or the in the left frontal area and therefore patients develops right hemiplegia. The left hand there is no paralysis because the right cortex is intact but the information to the right cortex cannot be transferred because of the lesion and therefore though it is non-paralytic uh, it has got apraxia it cannot move movements uh, sequentially or correctly. So this is known as sympathetic apraxia. So by destroying the origins of the fibers that connect the left and the right motor association areas, a lesion in the more anterior parts of the corpus callosum or the subcortical white matter underlying Broca's area causes apraxia of the commanded movements of the left hand and hemiplegia on the right side. Pure word deafness, again an interhemispheric uh, disconnection syndrome. Although the patient is able to hear and identify non-verbal sounds, there is loss of ability to discriminate speech sounds that is to comprehend spoken language. There is a failure to activate left auditory language areas, vernix area. Here the person is able to understand all the non-verbal sounds like the water gushing down or the fan making noise. But when a person speaks, he is not able to understand the language because again there is a disconnection wherein the information is not able to activate the left language areas that is the vernix area. So they will have pure word deafness. They may understand non-verbal sounds but pure words they cannot understand. That is why it is known as pure word deafness. Visual, inf dis visual agnosias and interhemispheric disconnection syndrome. Here the disconnection is in the stream of visual information. So if there is a disconnection between the occipital and temporal lesions, what of visual information is lost? If there is a disconnection between the occipital, occipital lobe and parietal lobe, where of visual information is lost? So if there is a disconnection between the occipital lobe and temporal lobe, occipital temporal lesions, what of visual information is lost? Example, prosopagnosia and inability to identify known faces. If there is a disconnection between the occipital lobe and parietal lobe, occipital parietal lesions, where of visual information is lost? Example, asymmetric tagnosia, inability to integrate the center with the periphery of the vision. They miss the forest for the tree. They cannot integrate the center with the periphery of the vision. Individual points, individual pieces they can see, but they cannot integrate. So when they are asked to see the forest in its entirety, they will be only focusing on the tree. They will miss the forest for the tree. So this is occipitoparietal lesions. So again, this is again an intrahemispheric disconnection syndrome. The disconnection being between occipital lobe and temporal lobe, causing what of information, what of visual information being lost. And second is a disconnection between the occipital lobe and parietal lobe, causing where of visual information being lost. So what are the compensations in disconnection syndrome? So if there are disconnection syndromes, what could be the compensation mechanisms? Example, classic example, we can take congenital agenesis of corpus callosum, a developmental anomaly. Corpus callosum is the fiber tract which connects the right and the left hemisphere. So when there is a developmental anomaly, so both are disconnected, both the hemispheres are disconnected. So what are the compensations that take place? The findings of disconnection syndrome may not be found when in a, the, though it is a developmental abnormality, though the corpus callosum is affected, the findings of disconnection syndrome may not be found because of these two compensations. One, the information is transferred by another route, perhaps the anterior commissure or posterior commissure or dual dominance for language and praxis was established during the early development. So, uh, though the both the hemispheres may be disconnected in a congenital syndrome like congenital agenesis of the corpus callosum, the manifestations may not occur because the information if it is not being able to transfer from the corpus callosum compensatory mechanisms occur compensatory changes occur wherein the information may be transferred by the anterior commissure or the posterior commissure or a uh, dual dominance both start establishing its own dominance dual dominance for language and practice was established 
during early development. So these are the very interesting manifestations of disconnection syndrome. I hope you have enjoyed listening to all my concepts of disconnection syndrome as much as I, I have delivered it. Uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, you can post on to my YouTube channel uh, or uh, message me to my email tklpm at gmail.com. I am also the author of the book Focused Neurology. If you, if you are interested, you can buy it online, especially Amazon wherein I have put all important concepts of neurology in a question and answer format uh, in Focused Neurology book. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and message me or connect me uh, on my email 3klpm at gmail.com. Thank you. Bye.